And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Many of us, including myself, were led to believe heaven is a place of peace and light. Because the Most High dwell in the heavenly realm, we automatically believe the heavens is holy and righteousness rule the heavenly realms. The first rebellion against the Most High took place in the heavens. Satan was the mastermind behind the rebellion. Satan deceived many angels in the process of his rebellion. The first rebellion led to a great war in the heavens. Many of us are not aware that there are many realms in the heavenly places. The scriptures call the place above the firmament, the heavens, as well as the higher creation of the Most High. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The firmament is the border between the lower places and the higher places. The heavens and the earth was created on the same day. Throughout the days of creation, the Most High began to create visible and invisible creatures to populate the heavens and the earth. Each day of creation had its purpose. Although the Bible does not say when the angels were created, as well as the war that followed after the creation of the angels, the ancient writings of our ancestors has revealed this information. The synagogue of Satan has concealed these scriptures. Some of the scriptures that were made public, the workers of iniquity slander to discredit. Give them the books of the handwriting, and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things, and will understand how there is no other God but me. Israelites, Make your own decisions concerning the books that were removed from the scriptures. Too many indigenous black people believe the doubts the workers of iniquity inserted into their minds. They are not conducting their own research for the truth. They just simply believe the synagogue of Satan. Do not let the rulers of this world control your belief. Remember, the wicked is ruling the earth. Do not allow the wicked to tell you what truth is. They are not qualified to tell you the truth of the Most High's words. Remember, only the Spirit of the Most High can reveal truth and tell you the things to come. The leaders of this world do not serve the Most High. They don't have the Holy Spirit to reveal truth. The synagogue of Satan is rewriting history and the scriptures right before our eyes. Righteousness do not reside in them. The scripture said good has become evil in the beast culture. Evil is considered good. The leaders of this world made sure to enforce this in the beast system. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The twisted mindset and the religious belief of the workers of iniquity in high places shouldn't match with your thoughts and belief. You have to be careful with what the world welcome and accept. Whatever the beast system accept is an abomination with the Most High. Do not let the synagogue of Satan tell you what to believe. They are the same people who have stolen your identity and write you out of history. In addition, oppress your life with every chance they get. Do not let them make decisions for you. Make your own decisions. The book of Enoch revealed it was on the second day of creation the angels were created. And for all the heavenly troops I imagined, the image and essence of fire, and my eye looked at the very hard, firm rock, and from the gleam of my eyes the lightning received its wonderful nature, which is both fire and water and water and fire. And one does not put out the other, nor does the one dry up the other. Therefore, the lightning is brighter than the sun, softer than water, and firmer than hard rock. And from the rock I cut off a great fire, and from the fire I created the orders of the incorporeal ten truths of angels. And their weapons are fiery, and their raiment 
a burning flame, and I commanded that each one should stand in his order. It was also on the second day more than half of the angels were misled by the ancient fallen angel called Satan. Satan is also the corporate to the downfall of our species, the human species. A little is said in the scriptures about the war in heaven. If you read the ancient writings of our ancestors, you can find the truth about the war that took place in the heavenly realm. Before the creation of Adam, the first of our kind. The book of Revelation said there was war in heaven. Michael, the archangel and the prince over our people fought against Satan and his angels. Satan and his angels were defeated and thrown down from the heavens to the bottomless. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. The Bible give us the end result of the battle. The Bible does not tell us when the war took place. What was the offense of the angels that caused the Most High to imprison the fallen angels? The book of Adam and Eve revealed to us about what took place in the heavenly realm on the second day of creation that caused many angels to denounce the Most High to follow Satan. The cherub that was guarding the garden revealed to Adam how Satan deceived himself and majority of the angels. Before I talk about what Satan said to the angels that caused them to denounce the Most High, the book of Enoch revealed that the beginning of Satan's downfall was when Satan deceived himself by thinking that he could build a throne right above the firmament to become equal to the Most High. And one from out the order of angels, having turned away with the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth, that he might become equal in rank to my power. And I threw him out from the heights with his angels, and he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless. Satan wanted to be like the Most High. Satan lusts after the Godhead. Israelites and indigenous black people, death and destruction awaits you when the spirit of pride takes over your life. The scripture said pride comes before the fall. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. It is important that you examine yourself to see if the spirit of pride has made a home in your heart and life. Pride brings destruction. Israelites, don't allow the spirit of pride to destroy your life. Remain humble before the Most High. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. The Most High is the sole ruler of his creation. The Most High uses whom he pleased to show himself strong through. Israelites, do not inherit Satan's mentality of believing he could be equal to the sovereign creator of all of our existence. Satan truly deceived himself when he said in his heart that he would exalt himself above the Most High. He made plans to sit on top of the congregations on the sides of the north. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Satan was thrown down to the sides of the pits, according to the scriptures. I don't know how a created being believed he could be equal to its creator. No wonder the Most High said Satan thought an impossible thought. The Most High is self-eternal. He is unmatched. There is none that is equal to him. When these idols hunger for the Godhead, they seek praise and worship from the people that idolize them. Israelites, this is why idolatry is a sin the Most High hates. 
the people are not aware when they worship these idols, they are placing these false gods above the most high. Most people are unaware that the gods of the beast system are fallen angels. Israelites, do as the scriptures say, flee from idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The fallen angels taught mankind to worship demons for gods. The fallen angels, as well as their leader, Satan, lust after the Godhead. It was through Satan's desire to be like the Most High, brought forth the war in the heavens. Satan preyed upon the angels by lying to them. Satan gathered the angels, made false promises to them. Promises such as giving them the Godhead, great kingdoms, and a divine nature. The same promises he made to Adam and Eve that led to their downfall. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. Israelites and indigenous black people, it is important that you understand Satan's occupation is deception. He is powerless. To be an adversary is to be an enemy. The Bible says Satan is our adversary. The Most High said to us that he has given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The Most High went on to say nothing shall by any means hurt you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19 said that our enemies cannot hurt us. It is important to understand Satan's dominion is an illusion. Israelites and indigenous black people, the Most High gave you power over your enemies. The issue is the indigenous black people do not know how to tap into that power the Most High has given to them. Satan know that you have power over him. Satan used deception to get you to relinquish your power and bow down to him. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan is talented in making the creatures of the Most High accept as true what is false. Satan deceived the angels into believing he can win against the Most High who created him. Somehow the angels believe he could accomplish this. More than half of the angels renounced the glory of the Most High to follow Satan. Satan continues to do the same thing today to greedy men and women who seek fame, money, and power. For example, because of the greed of the world leaders for great kingdoms, money, and power, they accepted Satan's offer to obtain great kingdoms in the beast system. That is why all of the superpower nations of today, their foundation is wicked. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. The greedy world leaders of today fail to realize everything is temporary. All the great kingdoms of this world will be destroyed. All the kingdoms of this world are led by the principalities, the fallen angels that follow Satan. The world leaders foolishly believe they are in control. If the leaders of this world were serving the most high, third world countries wouldn't exist. The people who populate the world would be flourishing all over the world. Satan robbed the third world countries to give to the rich first world nations of today. The heathens or Gentiles that are proud of their country turn a blind eye to the wickedness their nations is causing to the third world countries of today. These same people turn around and say God has blessed them and their nations. They are sadly deceived by Satan. The God that has blessed your nations is the God of this world, Satan and his angels. Remember, the fallen angels view themselves as gods. Satan has blind the eyes of many people that they cannot see. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, 
lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The angels who were not deceived by Satan's lies and refused to yield to Satan. The book of Adam and Eve said Satan sent for all the angels to come under his command. There is a hierarchy system in the heavens, just as there is a hierarchy among the children of men. The scripture says Satan was the anointed cherub. His position was very close to the most high. Because he was ranked higher than some angels, he commanded the angels to come under him. The holy angels refused. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. He then sent for us according to the orders in which we were to come under his command and to hearken to his vain promise, but we would not, and we took not his advice. When the holy angels refused to come under Satan, the scripture says Satan gathered all the angels that believe his deceptions and followed him to fight in war with the holy angels who refused to bow down to him. The scripture says Satan fought with the Most High and the Most High reprimanded him harshly by throwing him out of the heavenly realms with his angels to the bottomless. Then after he had fought with God and had dealt forwardly with him, he gathered together his hosts and made war with us. And if it had not been for God's strength that was with us, we could not have prevailed against him to hurl him from heaven. The holy angels who war with Satan was led by Michael, the archangel. The Bible revealed to us in the book of Revelations, Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. The Bible revealed that Satan lost the war. The scripture said the holy angels rejoiced when Satan was thrown out of heaven. This great war happened on the second day of creation, the same day the angels were created. The holy angels revealed to Adam that if the Most High did not cast Satan out of heaven, none of the angels would have survived or remained in the heavens. The war was that great. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in heaven because of his going down from us. For had he continued in heaven, nothing, not even one angel would have remained in it. The war that took place on the second day of creation was a conflict between the holy angels against the fallen angels that followed Satan. Our species was not yet created when this war took place. Adam was created on the sixth day of creation, four days after the war. Remember, four days equal to 4,000 years. One day is like a thousand years with the Most High. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Satan and his angels was thrown down to the earth. The scripture said the fallen angels are wicked. The wickedness that prevails among us is influenced by Satan and his angels, as well as wicked men who follow and serve these wicked angels because they have a hard heart like Cain. The war that took place in the heavens is not the only rebellion that happened in the heavens. When the angels do not adhere to the commands of the Most High, they are punished just as the Most High chastised the children of men, the ones he loves, according to the scriptures. The heavens have prisons for the angels who sin. The first heaven consists of the great sea that is greater than the earthly seas. It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him onto their wings and bore him up onto the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether, and they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. The first heaven also consists of 200 angels that rule over the stars, as well as guard the storehouses like the snow, the clouds, the trees, the wind, and the flowers of the earth. These angels showed Enoch how they open and close the storehouses. They brought before my face the elders and rulers of the stellar orders and showed me 200 angels who rule the stars and their services to the heavens and fly with their wings and come around all those who sail. 
And here I looked down and saw the treasure houses of the snow and the angels who keep their terrible storehouses and the clouds whence they come out into which they go. They showed me the treasure houses of the dew like oil of the olive and the appearance of its form as of all the flowers of the earth. Further, many angels guarding the treasure houses of these things and how they are made to shut and open. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By the opening and closing of the storehouses is how we get rain on the earth, snow, as well as the variety of weather. The Most High created the children of the heavens, the angels, to operate his creation. The second heaven is a prison for the angels. These are the angels that were led by the watchers who sin with the daughters of men, as well as the angels who follow Satan. They are held in the second heaven, being tortured in darkness. And those men took me and led me up unto the second heaven and showed me darkness, greater than earthly darkness. And there I saw prisoners hanging, watch, awaiting the great and boundless judgment. And these angels were dark looking, more than earthly darkness, and incessantly making weeping through all hours. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these incessantly tortured? They answered me, These are God's apostates, who obeyed not God's commands, but took counsel with their own will, and turned away with their prince, who also is fastened on the fifth heaven. The book of Jude in the Bible confirm the angels that are prisoned in the second heavens are the watchers that fornicated with the daughters of men and had children with them. The book of Jude revealed they are in prison in darkness, just as the book of Enoch said the second heaven is covered in darkness and a prison for the angels who sinned. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left to their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels who are in prison on the second heaven ask Enoch to pray for them. They are hoping the Most High would listen to Enoch and they would obtain mercy. And I felt great pity for them, and they saluted me and said to me, Men of God, pray for us to the Lord. And I answered to them, Who am I, a mortal man, that I should pray for angels? Who knoweth whither I go, or what will befall me, or who will pray for me? And go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. The watchers who took an oath to take the daughters of men for wives are the second group of angels that rebel against the Most High in the heavens. These watchers also followed Satan. The watchers who sinned brought great destruction to earth. The watchers taught mankind how to do all kinds of wicked things. The watchers taught men secrets that weren't supposed to be known. The watchers taught mankind to make weapons of war, makeup, witchcraft, bestiality, technology, and crossbreeding of the different species. They've taught mankind all sorts of wickedness. That is why the Bible said the angels corrupt the earth and the watcher Azazel is responsible for all sin. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. Azazel, as well as the other watchers, asked Enoch to intercede on their behalf. The watchers who sin are ashamed of what they have done. They seek forgiveness, but their petition was rejected by the Most High. Enoch, 
thou scribe of righteousness. Go, declare to the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace, nor forgiveness of sin, inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children. And Enoch went and said, Azazel, thou shalt have no peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bounds, and thou shalt not have a toleration nor request granted to thee, because of the unrighteousness which thou hast taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou hast shown to men. Then I went and spoke to them all together, and they were all afraid and fear and trembling seized them. I find it interesting that the watchers who sin are remorseful and seek forgiveness for their sins. Today, the children of men think they are above repentance. Some will use the word of the Most High to support their sins. Repent. The book of Enoch said the third heaven is where paradise is located. Paradise is known to us as the Garden of Eden. Paradise is currently inhabited by the angels that are upkeeping the garden. The righteous of Adam's seed will inherit paradise when the end comes. And those men took me thence and led me up unto the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and sensed the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees and beheld their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods borne by them bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees that of life and that place whereon the Lord rests when he goes up into paradise and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance and adorned more than every existing thing. And on all sides, it is in form gold looking and vermilion and fire like and covers all and it has produced from all fruits. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end. And paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk. And their springs send forth oil and wine. And they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course. And go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. Paul from the New Testament said he was taken to paradise in the third heaven. For those who doubt that paradise is in the third heaven, the book of Enoch, as well as Paul, confirmed paradise as we know as the Garden of Eden is in the third heaven. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. The fourth heaven consists of the sun and the moon. The book of Enoch goes into great details about the sun, the moon, and the angels that are over the sun, the moon, and the other luminaries, as well as the operation of the sun. The fifth heaven consists of the leaders of the watchers who sin with the daughters of men. The scripture said it was 200 who descend in the days of Jared and took an oath to defile themselves with the daughters of men. And Samjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath. And all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. The book of Enoch revealed there are numerous soldiers being held in the fifth heaven. The job of the watchers was to watch over mankind. The watchers soon began to lust after the daughters of men. Satanel, as we know as Satan, led in the watchers' rebellion. 
The fifth heaven is the only place there is no praise and worship in the heavens. The watchers are silent due to the embarrassment of their sins. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. The men took me on to the fifth heaven and placed me, and there I saw many and countless soldiers called Gregories of human appearance, and their size was greater than that of great giants, and their faces withered, and the silence of their mouths perpetual, and there was no service on the fifth heaven. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these very withered, and their faces melancholy, and their mouths silent, and wherefore is there no service on this heaven? And they said to me, These are the Gregory, who with their prince Sitanel rejected the Lord of light. And after them are those who are held in great darkness on the second heaven. And three of them went down onto earth from the Lord's throne to the place Ermon, and broke through their vows on the shoulder of the hill Ermon, and saw the daughters of men how good they are, and took to themselves wives, and befouled the earth with their deeds who in all times of their age made lawlessness and mixing, and giants are born, and marvelous big men, and great enmity. And therefore God judged them with great judgment, and they weep for their brethren, and they will be punished on the Lord's great day. The sixth heaven is where the archangels reside. The archangels are above the angels, as well as everything in the heavens and earth. They are appointed over certain regions of the world, as well as over the seasons, the years, over the rivers, and the seas. There are the angels who document our lives and all our deeds according to the book of Enoch. And thence those men took me and bore me up unto the sixth heaven. And there I saw seven bands of angels, very bright and very glorious, and their faces shining more than the sun's shining and glistening. And there is no difference in their faces or behavior or manner of dress, and these make the orders, and learn the going of the stars, and the alteration of the moon, or revolution of the sun, and the good government of the world. And when they see evil doing, they make commandments and instructions, and sweet and loud singing, and all songs of praise. These are the archangels who are above angels, measure all life in heaven and on earth, And the angels who are appointed over seasons and years, the angels who are over rivers and sea, and who are over the fruits of the earth, and the angels who are over every grass, giving food to all, to every living thing, and the angels who write all the souls of men and all their deeds, and their lives before the Lord's face. In their midst are six phoenixes, and six cherubim, and six six winged ones continually with one voice singing one voice and it is not possible to describe their singing and their rejoice before the lord at his footstool the seventh heaven is where the army of the most high dwell many of us have heard of thrones and dominions in the scriptures as well as the cherubim and the seraphim and the many-eyed creatures that surrounds the throne of the most high they are in the seventh heaven The high-level archangels are in the seventh heaven as well. And those two men lift me up thence unto the seventh heaven, and I saw there a very great light and fiery troops of great archangels, incorporeal forces and dominions, orders and governments, cherubim and seraphim, thrones and many-eyed ones, nine regiments, the ionic stations of light, and I became afraid and began to tremble with great terror. And those men took me and led me after them and said to me, Not much is said about the eighth and the ninth heaven. The book of Enoch said in the eighth and the ninth heaven is where the twelve signs of the zodiac and the heavenly homes to the zodiacs are located. And I saw the eighth heaven, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Muzaloth, changer of the seasons, of drought, 
and of wet and of the twelve signs of the zodiac which are above the seven heaven. And I saw the ninth heaven, which is called in Hebrew Hushavim, where are the heavenly homes of the twelve signs of the zodiac. The tenth heaven is where the Most High dwell. Above his throne there is nothing else. Have courage, Enoch, do not fear, and showed me the Lord from afar, sitting on his very high throne. For what is there on the tenth heaven, since the Lord dwells here? On the tenth heaven is God. In the Hebrew tongue he is called Aravat. And all the heavenly troops would come and stand on the ten steps according to their rank, and would bow down to the Lord, and would again go to their places in joy and felicity, singing songs in the boundless light with small and tender voices, gloriously serving him. Israelites and indigenous black people, according to the book of Enoch, there are 10 realms in the heavens. The children of the heavens are the angels. Each angel have an order and a job in the most highest creation. When the children of heaven are out of order, chaos and destruction fall upon the earth. The angels are responsible to upkeep the most highest creation. When these angels fall, it causes destruction and hardship for us on earth. When Satan fell, he took more than half of the angels with him in his rebellion. Satan's rebellion did not only affect the children of the heavens, but the children of the earth, the descendants of Adam as well. Satan made it his mission that Adam and his seed do not prosper in the earth. Satan declared earth to be his kingdom. Therefore did I fall, and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell. And with you also, whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again he said, And as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. Adam and his children became a pawn in the rebellion of a prideful fallen angel. When the watchers rebelled and gave in to lust, they brought their wickedness with them by teaching mankind all sorts of mysteries and secrets that we had no business knowing. The secret things the watchers revealed to the children of men is destroying them. The first rebellion against the Most High took place in the heavens before the creation of Adam. Now that the angels that sinned were punished and the Most High placed them in prisons until judgment day, righteousness is ruling the heavens. The heaven is home to the holy angels who did not rebel against the Most High, but served the Most High day and night. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. There are many realms in the heavens, and each realm serve its purpose. The first great war that took place in the heavens came from Satan, who allowed pride to deceive him. He wanted to be equal to the Most High. Because he is unable to achieve his goal, he seeks to destroy the other angels as well as our species in the process of his rebellion. Israelites, it is important to know who your enemies are. That way you are properly equipped for battle. Satan is full of wrath, but his time is limited. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Then the angels rejoice and praise God, and ask him not to destroy Adam this time, for his having sought to enter the garden but to bear with him until the fulfillment of the promise and to help him in this world until he was free from Satan's hands. We have the holy angels to help us on our journey. You have heard how they prayed on the behalf of Adam, asking the Most High to be patient with him. Satan and his angels are the cause to the wickedness that surrounds us. 
the children of men play their part in the rebellion as well. Many indigenous black people allow Satan to deceive them into trading their glory for the lesser. Now that your knowledge has increased, the time has come for you to put on the whole armor of the Most High to withstand the schemes of the enemy. Pride is Satan's downfall. Israelites, do not inherit Satan's prideful ways. Satan and the fallen angels have nothing to lose. They are aware of their end. You have an opportunity to obtain salvation. The signs of times are upon us. Repent, for the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, he received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe.